Kingdoms of Amalur is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I have to say that I was one of those disappointed ones when the remaster came out, since I was expecting a whole lot more love for our beloved game. Instead, all we got was some upscaling and resolution, a bunch of bugs and launch that weren't present even on the original launch of the game. With that though, we also got the promise of an expansion to increment the fun we all had in this amazing 2012 underrated RPG. In a possible sequel, this by Word of Rain Harpolis, in case the DLC performs well. Let us see how good did the DLC do, shall we? What is up you damn gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful gamers, do we all come back? Role playing games, this is Mariel Connor in the internet, where we like to discuss about RPGs. Before we move on though, I would very much like to invite you to hit the like button because it really helps me like you have no idea. And to subscribe to the channel because we talk about a bunch of RPGs in here, you might actually be interested in that. That being said, you're probably wondering about a graphical change in the DLC, on Fate Swan. That is not a simple answer. On the core of, the, of everything, the game still looks quite old, but there are a few things that actually do change and add some more versatility to Fate Sworn. There are many assets, you'll notice that on trees, on other models as well, such as buildings, statues, and stuff like that, also very much on dungeons. There are a few new towns, and they do change quite a lot, and the, at the very least, adds um, something else to, to be seen while you explore. As the biomes, there are quite a lot as well. But where Fate Sworn truly shines is when you get to the Eldrith Mountains, the snowy area of the game. Here you see new textures. And particles usage, the snow that floats around in that blue tone that adds such a magical vibe to the game. A magical vibe that Kingdoms of Amalur already has. But these are the things that I enjoy the most on the base game, the vanilla game. Another good thing, another good point about Fate Sworn are the armors. Some of them have reflections and definitely look like they have at least more polygons than the other stuff that we have in the game. When you find them, you definitely feel an upgrade, which is also true for the weapons. So, while there is not an intrinsic change on the core of the graphical side of things, there are indeed some of the new noticeable changes to be tasted visually on this DLC. Now let's go through all of you. For you. I am Telogras. God of Chaos and Liberator of your mortal souls. The lives you have been living are lies. Lies like those my enemies have told about me for generations. It ends now. Together, we will... <laughs> The soundtrack was composed by Grant Kirkhope. I was talking about the magical vibe that Kingdoms of Amalur has. The soundtrack is damn gorgeous. Although sometimes silent, it really feels the vibe it tries to give. Something really appreciated is that even, the, even they change the music for inside taverns and buildings as well as dungeons. Another very much appreciated thing is voice dialogue. There are tons of NPCs and quests out there. I cannot imagine how much work on lines had to be Put in here, I have always enjoyed Amalur voice acting, especially that of the main characters, which you will find very familiar voices in Fate Sworn. Now that leads us to the story of Fate Sworn. While reading on the internet, I found this review, where the game is being labeled as a pro on the story and a con on the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. The argument is that it is just another fairy tale, and there are a few problems with this statement. First and foremost, this is not a fairy tale, it's heroic fantasy. Second, what do you expect? An alien invasion to travel through time and make human pancakes? Let, let me tell you something, I am a nerd, <laughs> and I am quite proud about that. I grew up reading the stories of the Forgotten Realms by R.A. Salvatore, playing tabletop games based on these stories in my friend's basement. I love Arda, the world that Tolkien gifted to us. I also love Conan, the Cimmerian Barbarian. Kingdoms of Amalur is that, 
more heroic fantasy worlds to be explored. To be another hero fighting in this marvelous world, and I very much believe that this is what many of us enjoy the most. The soundtrack, that magical vibe that the graphics alongside the soundtrack, that the graphics while dated, at some extent they still invoke, they still provoke on us. It is m more heroic fantasy to be explored, like j li just like that, and there is nothing wrong about that. Now to gameplay. Interestingly enough, there are some new slight changes in gameplay that m not many people will notice, but first, the new addition. 10 more levels, downgrade on pure builds, upgrade on hybrid builds, new chaos endgame content in the form of mini dungeons and a new skill to find them, as well as chaos weapons, that is pretty much it. However, with the new gear there are also new playstyles, which is something I was conflicted on this review I just showed you. There are new armor sets that actually do change how you play the combat system that was always fun, simplistic, but always fun. For example, there is one that will have you focusing your playstyle on parries that actually highly rewards you for it. I found myself enjoying and toying around with these new playstyles and I will definitely have some guides on it for you guys coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Now, bias, recommendations and stuff like that, that I, I, I always try to break down the games as best as I can so that you can have your very own judgement on them, and then I add my bias and recommendations at the end of the review. At first, I thought to myself, $20 is way too much for such an old game. Short content. Let me tell you, if you actually do find yourself enjoying this thing, you can easily squeeze up to 20 hours in this thing. Bear in mind that a very small team of people worked on this DLC, and they did it with care. The voice dialogue, all the stuff that they have to do, the pipeline, the new tools that they have to work on, the voice dialogue, the new assets, the new gameplay changes and balancing with the levels and the new armor sets that alter how you play the game. I used to nuke everything in the vanilla game by using crafted gear because of how much overpowered it was. Now I find myself finally toying around with other stuff and I felt so damn rewarding. I know that 20 bucks might seem too much, like too much, for an old game, such a short expansion, quote unquote, <laughs> quote unquote short. But if we want a second entry, support is to be due. A while ago, I said that we should not support if it doesn't happen both ways. This time around though, I believe the effort placed in this piece of DLC it is definitely worth the support. I believe that the developers actually did this with care. I very much recommend you to get this DLC and play it. It's a damn classic and it's just much more stuff that you will very much enjoy if you enjoyed the, the game. That being said, that was all for me guys, I hope that you find the review useful, if you like this stuff then do please hit the like button, it really helps me like you have an idea like I said in the, for, at the beginning of the video. Remember to subscribe and that if no one has told you today that you're a gorgeous and then beautiful person, and you are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful person. I will be seeing you damn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day.